So to demonstrate the potential of 2D FETs, complementary devices based on the same active material with desirable threshold voltage polarity, symmetric current drive, and homogeneously integrate them into SEMA circuits are needed. So how exactly do you do that? First, we will adopt the bottom gate or the source-gated physical structure for the device. In terms of the material systems, we need to consider our choice for the 2D active film, the source strain electrode, and the dielectric environment with the goal of achieving a symmetric device performance as we tune these parameters. For the active film, MOS2 is the 2D semiconducting material of choice in this work as excellent N-channel transistor characteristics have been demonstrated over the years. But the issue here is that when P-channel devices are designed using MOS2, there are one to three orders of magnitude differences in their output current normalized with width. Now, this is because regardless of the metal deposited on top of the film, whether the work function is low or high, the metal Fermi level aligns near the conduction band edge of an undoped MOS2 upon the formation of contacts, making it easier for electrons to be injected to the channel and achieve N-channel characteristics, but difficult to realize P-channel characteristics. So how exactly do we overcome this issue? So an earlier work in our lab suggests that by using an NB-dope MOS2 film, it is possible to reduce the Fermi pinning effect and achieve a high current P-channel FET using MOS2. With the Fermi pinning effect reduced, a high work function metal such as platinum can be then used to align the metal Fermi level near the valence band edge of the NB-dope MOS2 film, thereby achieving P-channel characteristics. So to preserve the interface quality as platinum is deposited, the key is, use, is to use a slow evaporation rate in a high vacuum environment. So for the source drain electrode, platinum will be used both for the N and P channel devices. The rationale behind this metal selection is to improve the current drive of the PFET without sacrificing the performance of the NFET. So to verify this, Test devices are fabricated by exfoliating undoped MOS2 films for the NFET and nb dope MOS2 films for the PFET. The exfoliated films with thicknesses ranging from 5 to 8 nanometer are identified optically and transferred on separate substrates with heavily doped silicon as the global back gate and aluminum oxide as the gate dielectric. So after defining the source drain electrodes using e-beam lithography, the scum is performed. So one PFET test device underwent autoplasma treatment for passivating sulfur vacancies on the open contacts to make the barrier at the metal nb dope MOS to surface even smaller. So PTs then evaporated at a slow deposition rate and unwanted metals are lifted off to reveal the contacts. So using this fabrication process, it is verified that high current PFETs can be fabricated with nb dope MOS2 film and with platinum evaporated at a slow deposition rate and autoplasma treatment for passivating sulfur vacancies before metal evaporation. It is also verified that by using platinum as the source drain electrode for the NFET, the device performance is not compromised. So after these verifications, 2D MOS2 complementary devices are fabricated to form a CMOS circuit inverter with inputs tied using a global back gate. NB-dope and undope MOS MOS2 films are exfoliated using a deterministic dry transfer method with a water-soluble PVA as the transfer media. The sample is soaked in, P in DI water to dissolve PVA and then adhered. The contacts for the PFET are defined first and passivated using autoplasma treatment. This is followed by the source drain electrode definition for the NFET and the tide drain connection. PT is then evaporated at a slow rate and then unwanted metals are finally lifted off. So the complementary devices show high on-off current ratios with minus 1 volt and minus 2 volt as threshold voltages extracted for the NFET and PFET respectively. And symmetric current drive are, is also achieved. On the circuit level, a rail-to-rail -rail performance is achieved along with a wide noise margin of around 85% and a gain of around 20 at a 3-volt supply. 
So while complementary devices are realized with symmetric performance using the same type of 2D semiconducting film, what is apparent from the first implementation is the undesirable threshold voltage polarity of the NFET. To correct this, we need to further consider the interface quality of the channel stack. As discussed earlier, oxides do not form covalent bonds with the naturally terminated surfaces of 2D films. As such, interface states are formed, causing mobility degradation and threshold voltage shift towards a non-desirable polarity. So to improve the interface quality, an all 2D channel stack or a van der Waals heterostructure can be considered wherein the gate can be formed using graphene and the gate dielectric with H-band. So it should be noted that in the following demonstrations, only the gate electrode and dielectric will change, but the choice for the active films and the source drain electrode will not change. Next, we will consider how the threshold voltage varies with the dimensional and physical parameters. For the PFET, since the 2D film is doped, it behaves like a junction-less transistor, with thermionic emission as its main contact transport. For the NFET, as the body is undoped and a finite barrier is present at the metal 2D interface, it operates similarly to a tunneling transistor, when the source metal from a level has to align first to the conduction band edge at the 2D dielectric interface to promote tunneling. Now, the purpose of these expressions is to only show the rationality for how we select the succeeding dimensional parameters, particularly for the 2D film and dielectric thickness. So as shown in this graph, without the oxide charges when HBN is used, it is predicted that the complementary devices will exhibit desirable threshold voltage polarity for the following range of 2D film and dielectric thickness. And in the an in-depth threshold voltage study for 2D FETs will be provided in the next section. Now, how to correct the threshold voltage? Now that the, how to correct the threshold voltage polarity is known, complementary 2D FETs with Van der Waals channel stack are fabricated using deterministic dry transfer method. The process is almost the same as previously discussed, but to build the all 2D channel stack. HBN films are first prepared on temporary substrates, then MOS2 films with thicknesses ranging from 5 to 8 nanometers are optically identified, picked up using water-soluble water PVA as a supporting layer, and deterministically pressed down to the temporary substrate holding HBN. So the MOS2 HBN stack is then transferred onto graphene, which was placed on the final substrate. E-beam lithography is then again used to define the circuit connection for a CMOS circuit inverter with the gate of the complementary devices tied together for the input along with their drains for the output. So platinum is again used as a source drain electrode and for metallization. So with platinum as the electrode, an asymmetric device operation is achieved such that the PFET mainly operates with thermionic emission as the main contact transport, while the NFET is that of tunneling. So because of this careful treatment of the material system, processing, and further understanding of how the devices work, high on of current ratios and symmetric current drive are achieved in the all 2D channel stack complementary devices. Furthermore, desirable threshold voltage polarities are achieved and are well within our predictions. So with this device level characteristics, a stiff voltage transition is achieved in the CMOS circuit implementation with high noise margin and high gain at a low power supply as the drain saturates at relatively low voltage as shown in the output characteristic curve previously.